All right, folks, I'm back. I'm back here with a new microphone. Thank you, Christian, for um, lending me your, for borrowing, borrowing me your wonderful Rode microphone. Today, I want to talk about a sketch, um, which is one of the coolest sketches I think I've made in this programming poster series. It is, um, it is a, you know, it, it just covers many techniques that are quite, um, yeah, well, on vogue at the moment. If you watch the works by Dia Studio, for example, they work a lot with um, techniques like this. And um, okay, let me give you a quick glimpse into it. Um, it's a sketch that uh, is also controlled by Touch OSC, and today I can show you um, how it, how that one is looks like. Well, this is Touch OSC for the iPad. I'm not sure if you can see that, but um, I've got these knobs here, and when I, when I just touch these knobs, that I can change parameters that control the um, the sketch itself. So. Um, Awesome, let me just fix that iPad again and bring it again into the right position to work with it. Here we go. Um, all right, so what you see here in this sketch is not really, well, that's not really <laughs> any magic happening here, right? So the magic is happening because, or if I just, um, well, pull these knobs here, right? I'm just adjusting some of the stuff and I can make some really nice, um, Oops, some some nice photo filters that are kinetic in a way. You know, they're just um, there's going away through the images, and uh, well, it just you know it just transforms parts of the image with sine waves. So that means they, I'm just pushing sine waves through fragments of the image, and uh, the function that is needed to achieve such an effect is called copy. And I didn't know that copy the copy function exists. Uh, in my course, you know, I teach um, generative design and creative coding at Hochschule Rhein-Waal in Camp Lindfort in Germany. And I had a student um, who just, she just, um, we just have this course, it's called programming posters, right? So the students make exactly what I did the last month. So they, um, they just develop poster designs with processing and make them interactive and, and you know, that, that is basically what a course is about. And um, a student of mine um, just told me about a function that's called copy, the copy function. And the copy function does something very simple. It just takes a defined um, area of the image and uh, copies it to another area. And you can scale it and you can move it around and stuff. And what ha what's happening here, I'm going to explain you exactly what's how I use the copy function in this case here. Right, so, um, okay, let me just show you a little a few more moves I can do here. So, well, I've got two, two, um, two uh, faders that control if the wave is going through the X or the Y axis. In this case, it's, well, it's just one big fragment, but I can increase the the, the number of, of columns here, right? So there are now a few columns that go through the image. And uh, yeah, shift those columns to the left and the right, um, depending on a sine wave. And the sine wave is not just one dimensional, it is two dimensional. That means when I just um, increase the, the wave on the Y axis, it mixes up in a beautiful way. Let me just, um, yeah, well, let me just overdo this a little bit to show you how it looks when I just really <laughs> uh, go crazy with that. So that that is that is something very weird. Okay, and of course, I believe you just saw that. What's going with Firefox just jumping up there? Um, of course, you saw that. In this case, I was using. Um, well, I was redrawing an image with with a grid of rectangles, right? And this grid of rectangles, the rectangles are the size of the rectangles is depending on the brightness of the image that is scanned. So it is a quite complex sketch, but I'm going to show you exactly what happens here. So first of all, I am just initializing a P graphics um, element. And the P graphics element is the place where I redraw the image, right? I take the image, which is a image file. Let me show you the image quickly. Uh, it's this one, right? It's public domain. Um, and um, yeah, 
I just redraw the image or recreate the image with a filter on a P graphics um, element, right? I don't know why position Y is used or is defined here. Let me see where, okay, I just, it looks like I need it anyway. So, and also I have a P image, which is the image itself, the JPEG, right? And um, here in the setup, I just load the image and then I create this P graphics element. And then I say set up sketch, which, which is in framework.pde. I showed it in the last video, um, which is a quite complex um, processing file where many things are uh, set up. In this case, I, um, well, I set up shape mode and ellipse mode and I initial, initialize this, uh, a cursor and initialize the, the video export functions. So um, there, there's a lot of magic going on here when this function is called. Um, and this is a little bit more, it's a little bit older sketch. So the template here doesn't use the technique I explained in the last video, but we get rid of that. I think that's not too too bad. Um, that's okay for the moment. So void settings is something like a hidden function um, that I didn't know before. Uh, it enables you to use variables in setup because if you want to um, say size is, is a special variable or something, then uh, it didn't work out anyway. And th that's how that's settings enables you to, to do that. I'm not sure if it's really the purpose of the settings function. I'm not really sure why those guys made, made that function. But um, yeah, I guess it was anything, anything like that. So, um, so just for understanding, I also could copy the whole stuff into the setup function here and I could run the sketch and everything would work the same way. So don't care about settings. That's not really important. So, so I don't need a cursor. I, oops, I can deactivate the cursor. So rec mode, blah, blah, blah. Here's the background. Okay, here, as I already mentioned in the last video, poster start is the place where I start drawing the poster. So what I do here is resizing the image to a fixed width. Um, and what th that does is it, it just, you know, just puts the, um, puts the image into a special size. And if you uh, choose the value um, zero for the height, then um, it the height is calculated from the from the uh, ratio of the image, right? So here I begin drawing on the P graphics element. I have the feeling that my glasses are very dirty, right? I just came out of the train <laughs> a few minutes ago um, uh, because I was teaching Camp Lindford and whew, okay, I just was inspired to make this video quickly and uh, yeah, so there with me and my dirty glasses for now, please. Um, okay, in this P graphics element, I um, draw the background with the background color and I fill the elements inside of the P graphics element with the foreground color. And I tell the P graphics element to draw something with no strokes. Um, well, here's some, so a few things going on here. Um, PG1 res is the resolution of the, of the image. It is bound to a fader. Uh, and this fader is the number three. You can't see my iPad at the moment, but I'm not, no, um, talk, well, I just use, let me see. I just use the fader three and what it does is just, it just um, changes the resolution of the image. Fader four, right to the fader, fader three. It's difficult to imagine that I think without seeing it, but okay, I think you have to deal with that. Fader four is increasing and decreasing the size of the rectangles. Well, the maximum size of the rectangles. So here I draw a uh, um, uh, two-dimensional grid and I've got two variables. One is pixel X and one is pixel Y. It is an integer because I want to pick a specific pixel from the pixel array of the image. That's why it has to be an integer. And um, the scaling variable is used in this case to um, to rescale the image. That means now I have bound um, few keystrokes like plus and minus, I think. Ah, no, it doesn't work. It worked once, <laughs> but it's possible to, um, well, rescale the, 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 the image on the, on the P graphics element with plus and minus and the scaling variable here. But I think the scaling variable is fixed now. Yeah, it's yeah, like here it is, right? It is fixed, I believe. I'm not, ah, okay, I, let's, let's, let's forget that. Um, scaling is, basically for um, zooming in and zooming out of the image. 
but I don't need we don't need that at the moment. So color pixel is the well the color of the pixel. So we can call a function on the p image element like image get this pixel pixel x pixel y, and float bry is a shorthand for brightness, and it just um, calculates or recalculates the color values uh, into a brightness value. So a float between zero and two hundred fifty five. So what I do here is I map the brightness into a size variable, right? Because I want to I want the size of the of the of the rectangles that draw this grid um, to be controlled here. And as I yeah, as I last time in the last video I was talking about using two colors, right? This is a way to deal with two colors if you want to draw um, yeah images on your screen right so we have to pixelate it again <laughs> we have to pixelate it our own way right so um that's or vectorize it our, our own way so that's how i just solved this problem here is a pg push matrix and translation um uh yeah function right i just translate the p graphics um element here in this two-dimensional for loop the pixels to um, x and y and draw these the rectangles here right and then i say pop matrix and i say and draw so that means we know we've got a p graphics element where this image is um where this image is drawn on and let me quickly just uncomment this for loop to show you how it how that how that thing looks okay image pg dot with uh, I'm not sure with divided by two and height divided by two. Let's see what happens now. Nothing happens. Okay, let's forget that. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you that we've got something like exactly like this here. I, I know why. Why does it draw something on the canvas even if this loop is commented? I have no idea what's happening here. Let me just think about that quickly. Huh. Hmm. Ah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Again. Okay. Let's uncomment this loop, this two dimensional loop. Again. Let's say image PG and then um, zero and zero. And what this does is it should, if it works. Okay, so it draws the image now at this position here, but I can't now make these um, waves. I can make these wave motions now in this in this image because this is the real image. The image function draws the p-graphics element onto our canvas, but I can't go through it with these nice wobblings, which happen here in this two-dimensional loop. And I show you exactly what's happening here. Let's take this and um, co comment this in. So what we do here is we say, First, we have to go through this here. We say, how many tiles do we have? Um, the fader five controls the tiles. So fader five is this one here, right? This is fader five. Um, and uh, fa fader six controls the tiles that is uh, that are drawn on the y-axis. And the tile W is the tile width. And uh, the tile width is you can um, you can you can calculate the width of the tiles by dividing width through tiles x, the width through the, the number of tiles you want to draw on your canvas on your on your sketch window, right? And the same you can do the same with the with the um, tile with the tile h. What why why do I use width here? Why do I always use width here? Tile tile. Normally it should be height, I think. But uh, okay, let's forget that for a moment, and maybe we can fix that later. The range x. What is the range x again? Fader one and ah. Okay, the range is the range of the wave that goes th through the image. So if I just increase, if I increase the wave one, the range x of the of the of the uh, x wave 
<laughs> it's a little bit difficult to understand. But as you can see, there's a sine wave going from the left to the right. Okay, but now every single tile, basically the, the whole P graphics element is drawn on one huge tile, right? Because tile X and tile Y uh, is one. Tiles X and tiles Y is one. So I can change that by um, using the faders here. So and that that's how I just get these wavy, nice movements on my sketch. Um, what is this? Not sure. Okay, here's the two-dimensional loop. I have to loop through all the tiles X and all the tiles Y. Y and uh, Verschiebung means is German means something like uh, translation. So it's translated. And here are two um, quite complex sine waves, a sine wave and a cosine wave. And um, they are mixed with some magic variables here. And um, yeah, this is the, the wave you see, right? This is the, this is the wave you see when, when we just, um, we just increase these two faders on my beautiful Touch OS X application. Basically, that's it. Um, I see, as I can see, I just programmed something. Yeah, I, I also can uh, move the image from the left to the right with my, with my uh, keyboard. That's happening here. And um, normally I should be able to, to scale it. Ah, I know why it didn't, didn't happen or didn't work because I have to hold minus because uh, this, if key pressed function is not a key release or key pressed function outside of a loop, it is a boolean that says, oh, the, the key is pressed, right? And it's in the draw loop. That means when I just hold plus, then something happens. When I just when I just hit it once, nothing happens, or it's just not moving the beautiful sketch properly. Ah, okay, it works, but not with plus. It's not really working with plus. All right, that's basically it. Um, I hope you find this stuff uh, you found this stuff uh, helpful for your own sketches, and I'm really really excited to hear comments and what do you think about. Uh, these tutorials and um, yeah please don't hesitate to give me your feedback tell me your ideas tell me your wishes for new tutorials i really love to get in touch with you and enjoy your weekend bye bye see you soon